speaking to her earlier today, I, I love kids. I've always loved kids. They say they a blessing in my life. Man. What about you, Coach? Are you looking for a wife? <laughs> uh, you are, we'll find you one now. She may, she may be real fat and big fat and ugly, but I'll be all right to one of them. You got one. Anyone got anything that's going to be like that? Testimony or song, anything. But God has been good to you, you realize or not, God has been good to you. Now, I thought this morning a lot of places I could be. God bless me, and I'm able to be here this morning. I thought about what I said this a little bit ago about, about the mind. But I'm going to tell you, Satan, Satan tell you this morning there's no hope, there's no way. Let me remind you, he's a liar. Cast your cares. <coughs> this is in the church. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Nobody else understands. Nobody else you can go to, but you can go to God. Amen. You better him. He's God, he loves you, he cares for you. And I thank God this morning, he is. He is the first man. Amen. Anyone else, anything? I'd like to praise him for what I'm doing today. Y'all know in November, I couldn't feel God. I was just. Not in, did not feel um, like I was in fellowship with him at all. And all of y'all that Wednesday night prayed with me and stuck with me and encouraged me. But God is very real in my life today. And I know he is always with me. And I thank him and I praise him for that. I'm going to say this again. I've said it a lot of times. Now listen to this. God will be God in your life if you will allow him to be. You hear what, you hear what I said? But for him to be God in our life, we have to allow him to be. We keep him shoved off over here in the corner somewhere. He won't be God in our life. But we'll walk hand in hand with him. He'll be God in your life. Amen. I, I'm glad I made it. You know, every, every trouble we have, every heartache, every disappointment, God sees every one of them. He, he's concerned about you. We got a lot of mamas and daddies and granddaddies here and their mothers here. If your children come to you to need, you do everything in your power to help them. You will. So how much more does God love us? So you're talking about that. But he loves you this morning. He does. I don't know why I'm going to be this way, but somebody needs to hear this this morning. God loves you. God cares. Nobody else does. God understands. I thank God for that. Anyone else?
Seriously, you got to go for some testimony. I remember for God to go with him. He's going to be there when he gets there. Amen. He, he, like I said, he'll be God if you'll let him this morning. Anyone else?
the Presbyterian God's house, not Methodist Church, God's house. This is his place. This was dedicated to him. And he can get <coughs> it across the big wall. He may go home with you, you may can have a good time at your house. But if you can have a good time at your house, come to God's house and you'll see the difference. God bless all of you. What else? I can't go your farm, you can't do mine. Brother Rick, I can say, thank you, Lord, for your blessing. Amen. Amen. <coughs> well, he blesses us, but we're going to be thankful. He's just going to take it for granted. You're not going to get in nobody's way doing that if I would have you do it. Don't you know that this morning? Amen. I know how sad to tell you, you can't want me to say anything. I'm going to tell you, God, when you say something, you need to say something. <coughs> Man, I beat this morning. I mean, I, I beat from the table of God, but it's been food my soul this morning. Amen. Amen. So what else? He won't. I was going to turn God to him. He called Sheriff Steve and said, Go and get him a message. I can't wait for him just to, to shoot me for my own self. Gosh, I hope I get up here one Sunday and get ready to preach. And you say, wait a minute, just go away this minute. i got to preach. That's what I'm, what I'm praying for. God, just get a hold of you. Bless you. You ain't got to call me to get an appointment from me. Well, God gives you the appointment. If I give you something to do, just do it. Amen. We appreciate, appreciate this young man of God. I want you to pray for him this morning. Come on, brother. God, just preach that. God, God bless you. Thank you, sir. Be in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. <laughs> Romans chapter 12, starting with verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Listen to this, by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The renewing of your mind is what I want to focus on because the renewing of your mind is really important because you say you are transformed, you become a new creature in Christ. So you can't be living the old ways, you've got to be renewed. And your mind's a very important thing because when you renew your mind, that's where a lot of the spiritual battles are fought or in the mind. If you look back at Mark 15, 22, it says that when they took Jesus to Calvary, Calvary is also called Gol Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, which is a which is a kind of way of looking at it that we fight our spiritual battles mostly in the mind. I'm not saying that they're always in the mind, but most of them are in the mind because that's where the devil likes to attack. He wants to attack you up here. That's where he likes to get in your head because if he can make you doubt, one little seed of doubt that grows can sprout into something where you start doubting God. So that's why the Bible tells us that we need the helmet of salvation to keep us spiritually minded. We need to be spiritually minded and put our minds on God. See, we have three important gates to, to think of and to protect on. We have the eye gate, we have the ear gate, we have the mouth gate. The eye gate is very important to protect because what you see yeah. when it gets into your mind is what you start thinking about. God bless you, come on. <laughs> I thought I debated on whether saying this or not, but on Facebook, on Facebook I know Miss Joyce sees it. I put my verse of the day on there every day and she likes it. Brother Perry likes it. But Ever since I started that, I started that about maybe a year and a half ago, I started putting my verse of the day on there. And the devil will put something on Facebook that I have to go in and block, have to go in and take it off, something that I used to be subscribed to. Because he knows what these fleshly eyes like to see, don't he, Brother Ricky? He likes to see us. He likes to see us stumble because he puts it there. And what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to turn away. We're supposed to stop it right then. If we look at it for just one second too long, Right. We committed sin because that's not what God wants us to see. So the eye gate is very important. What you see gets into your mind, and that's what you start pondering on. The ear gate 
It's very important to protect your ears because if you're at work and you're hearing somebody talk negative, bringing you down and cussing or something like that, what it does, it gets in your brain and you yeah. start thinking about it. You start thinking, well, brother Ricky, it ain't bad if I start cussing. If I say one little word, it ain't that bad. But guess what? It is bad, isn't it? Because the ear gate is very powerful. It goes into your mind, and that's what you start doing. Our mind is very precious, and God wants us to be spiritually minded. If we're not spiritually minded, we're, no, we're of no earthly good, Brother Ricky, because you know what? We can't win to sell nobody if we're not spiritually minded because God don't want us to live worldly. He wants us to live spiritually, don't he? The mouth gate is very important because, like I said, with the ear gate, when you start talking, you can, you can hurt someone's confidence. You can hurt a new Christian by one wrong word. All it takes is one wrong word, and you can bring somebody down. You can turn them the whole opposite way from God. We need to be very careful the way we speak to people because Christ loves everybody. And we're supposed to love the, love the sinner, hate the sin. So we're supposed to encourage them. We're supposed to be Christ-like. Our words are supposed to be Christ-like. If we're talking like a chunky yard dog on Monday, how are we going to bring someone up on Sunday? So... Yeah. By the renewing of your mind that you may prove prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God's will for us is for us to be, be disciples of him. He wants us to go about and preach his word. How are we going to do that if we're over here looking at trash on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday? Because if, you, if it's on your mind, what are you going to be thinking about when you come into God's house? You ain't going to be focused on what I'm saying or what you're saying or what anybody says because you're going to be thinking about that in your subconscious. You're going to be thinking, well, I could be off. I could be off playing golf somewhere. I could be watching TV at home right now. I, I could have stayed in bed today. I mean, if the devil can attack your mind, that's how he's gonna that's how he's gonna separate you from God. All it takes is one little thing to trip you up. And it's very important, those three gates, the eyes, ears, and mouth. It's very important. I work at the chicken plant over at Cooks, and I know that I hear a lot of a lot of vulgar talk throughout the day that I have to I have to put it out of my mind and I've tried to talk to a few people and I've gotten I've gotten cussed out a couple of times by people that didn't want to hear it but I just had to keep going my way. But I mean if you think if you let that get into your ears and you let it start dwelling in your mind, it's gonna bring you down, it's gonna hurt you, it's not gonna build you up, it's gonna bring you down. Because guess what? That's not the way God wants you to live. Brother Ricky, how many people do you go up to on a daily basis that you may try to talk to and then they start talking like that? Does it not hurt you? Does it not hinder you? It, it'll make you start thinking. It'll, make, it'll almost make you want to start doubting. But when you get into that word and you start reading God's word, guess what? The renewing of your mind yeah. is what keeps you spiritually minded. God, when you, when you got up, from that altar, when he saved you, whenever you get saved, you are new. You're created new. You can't live all the way. You can't, you can't live heartily. You've got to live spiritually. You've got to walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. You shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Is that not right, Brother Ricky? Because guess what? That's what God wants for us, and that's what he'd have for us. So, Amen. He loves his children. I bless you, son. On the mouth gate, I got to thinking about this yesterday as I was studying. The reason why the mouth is so is so important to protect is because not only what our eyes and ears uh, hear and uh, see, our mouth, our tongue is sharper than a two-edged sword. It'll cut someone down in a heartbeat. It'll hurt somebody. You can, you can, I can go up to you, Brother Ricky, and I can hurt you in a way by saying one wrong word. Sorry, don't fix it. Take a dollar bill and crumble it up, throw it on the ground. Yeah, it may still be money, but it ain't the same. But you can you can try to spread it out a piece of paper. You can try to get it back, but it's going to be crinkled and ripped, maybe ripped up a little bit. But you can't fix it. Saying sorry does not fix it. Our tongue is very very powerful. That's why when we when we when you become a Christian, you read the Bible. It's very important and very crucial that we. Be Christ-like when we talk to people. We need to encourage people, and if they if they're going the wrong way, we need to encourage them, show them, and help them go the right way. You start harping on somebody, you're going to do more damage than good. I mean, it don't take it don't take much to go walking down the street somewhere and seeing people that are 
live in the way they shouldn't live. And that's just the generation we're living in. I mean, people aren't hiding it no more, brother. If they're out in the open, aren't they? You can walk right down the street and see something you shouldn't be seeing. Yeah. But it's very, very important that you guard these spiritual eyes because if you're not if you're not looking spiritually, hearing spiritually, or speaking spiritually, you're going to do more damage to yourself. You're going to not only are you going to hurt other people, but you're going to hurt yourself because what 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 good are we if we let that affect us? What good are we? We're not going to be any good, not of any earthly good, if we're not spiritually minded. If we don't do what God has us to do, we're not we're not going to be. That that he has to be. No right above it, it says, "I beseech you, therefore, brethren, the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service." How are we going to present our bodies as a living sacrifice and holy and acceptable unto God if we're being, if we're living if we're living like trash throughout the week? I mean. God, you may hide it. I can hide it from Brother Ricky. I can hide it from Brother Charlie, or Charlie can hide it from me. But God sees you. We talked about this this morning. He sees the inward man, does he not? We can hide it from anybody, but God knows your heart. He knows the nature of your heart, so he knows. You can't hide nothing from God. And I started thinking about this yesterday. I know there's a lot of ways that I can improve myself and my spiritual walk, and I know I need to do better. But y'all will never know how much y'all mean to me and how much y'all... Y'all helped me along my journey. Because since we got back into church, my mind has been renewed. And I'm telling you right now, this is a this is a great place. This is a great feeling that I have with my mind being renewed. I, when you're living like that, you get blind to it, brother. If you, after a while, you become numb. You stop seeing all the stuff that you, that you once thought was wrong. But once you get back into when you get when you when you make your way back to God and God pulls you back in when He says all right that's enough and He brings you back in you start seeing all the stuff that you you don't want to partake you don't want to partake in it no more you don't want to do all that stuff because it hurts you it makes you feel bad yeah. it makes you it makes you think oh Lord if that that's how I feel right now imagine how God felt when I was out there doing it yeah. Amen. what you see what you hear and what you speak the Bible says that's that the man so with that shall I also read because one day when we're being judged, everything we said is going to be is going to be revealed. Everything we try to hide, everything we try to cover up that we thought we can hide from people, God's going to bring it to light. It says that all things we brought into the light, and I'm telling you right now, it's better now to ask for forgiveness now for it than for it to be brought up later because the good thing about God is He's willing to forget it. He'll throw it as far as the east is from the west. But if you don't ask for it, you don't get your mind renewed. Guess what? It ain't gonna do you no good because it's gonna be you, you didn't hide it from God. You can hide it from me. You can hide it from anybody, but you can't hide it from God. God sees all. This is a little bit different than I, the way I thought it was gonna go. I, when I was reading this, I was thinking that it was gonna be a little bit different, but God leads me the way He wants me to go. So. Yeah. right here in Ephesians 6, 17 it says and take the helmet of salvation and the word of the spirit which is the word of God the helmet of salvation it, when you put your helmet of salvation on the devil can't attack your minds because you're going to be pondering on God's word just like with the sword this is your sword this is what you have to fight against the devil with because he's going to try to attack you he knows your weak spot and if you're not careful he will expose it he will, he will do everything he can to knock you down that's why it's a, the whole armor of God's important, but your mind, you need to be very, very careful when you're using your mind because the devil will take your mind. Just like a lot of these young people, like uh, that note today that Nicole left about uh, one of her 
The daughters or granddaughters having those uh, evil thoughts. That's the devil getting into her mind. He's wanting to bring her down as much as he can. He wants to. He wants to attack it. If he can live. If he can live there rent free. He will do it as long as he can because he don't want you to be close to God. Praying always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. If you pray, if you're praying daily, if you get in the habit of praying daily, and you're talking to God, God will keep your mind guarded because you'll be thinking about Him. There ain't nothing the devil can do if you put your mind on him. He will he will guide you and guard you the way that you need to be guided. I pray every day that the Lord put a hedge of protection on me and Caitlin and our family as we go forward because I don't know what's going to happen throughout the day. I mean, I'm not promised tomorrow. I could be gone tomorrow when I go to work. I could, anything can happen. But the renewing of your mind is very important because our spiritual battles are going to be fought in the mind. And the devil would love nothing more than to tear us down. If he can get that down with us, he can make us doubt what God has for us. God don't want you to doubt. you got to put all your trust in him. And that's a lot harder saying than doing because guess what? If you can't see it, it's hard to believe, ain't it, Brother Ricky? But a million dollars are real. I ain't never seen it, but it's out there. So why would you believe that when you can believe that God's went off to prepare a place for you and that he's coming back again? I mean, I'm just... <coughs> Um, as I was reading this yesterday, I was studying on it. It actually started as, uh, I think, Wednesday or Thursday. I think it might have been Thursday. I was reading my daily devotion, and uh, Romans 12, 2 was my, right above my devotion. And then I pulled up my phone, and my verse of the day was that. And I also turned there in my Bible and started reading it. So God showed it to me three times that. That's what he wanted me to focus on, the renewing of your mind. So I was like, okay. So the more I started reading it, I was like, well, what do you want me to do about it? So, and then that's when I got the urge to call Brother Ricky, make sure that uh, Brother uh, uh, Brother Raymond wasn't coming to uh, preach today because I didn't want to get in his way. But uh, he said that, that he was going to be here the next week. So I said, well, I got a message to him because God wanted me to really drive this home. This may just be for me today, but the renewing of your mind will do you a lot of good because I'm telling you right now, that's the devil's playhouse. He can get in there and he can wreak havoc. That's exactly what he's going to do because he's going to drive you as far as he can. But the renewing of your mind, when you repent, you return to, you become a new creature in Christ, there ain't nothing the devil can do. You just got to keep keep your guard up and you allow God to work in your life. And I'll tell you what, the devil will flee from you. Resist the devil and he'll flee. So... That's about all I got this morning, so I hope I've touched somebody, even if it's just for me. I'm glad for the opportunity to get up here, and I'm glad that the Lord's led me the way he has, so I'm going to turn it back over to Brother Ricky. Wow. you this today, you do not want no sins tagging on behind you 
Whatever you do, it's, you're going to be in a mess. Now, we've talked about it this morning in Sunday school about repentance. But I'm going to tell you, it, it, it's a needful thing. And we'll never get in our life, regardless of how far we go with God, we'll never get to the point that we don't need repentance. But each and every one of us need repentance in our, in our daily life. In our daily life, that, that, that's our problem. But we'll let things build and build and build and build. And you know what happens? Brother becomes a big old mountain. It looks like it's something that's impossible. I'm going to tell you this today. If you repent daily, if you repent daily, renew that mind daily. But I believe that's what Paul trying to tell us, brother Josh. Renew this mind. Renew it daily. Brother, I'm going to tell you, brother, I'll tell you what it'll do. It'll save you a lot of heartaches. It'll save you a lot of disappointment. It'll, 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 it'll save you a lot of trouble in life. Brother, you renew this mind. Make sure. Make sure your mind is going the way God wants it to go. Amen. Brother, as I said earlier, Brother, that Satan speaks to her mind, but God speaks to the heart. Amen. Amen. So if I couldn't hear God's voice speak to my heart this morning, I'd tell you what I'd do. Brother, I'd get in the altar somewhere. I'm glad that, that His Holy Spirit, brother, it will lead and it'll guide and direct us every day of our life. But we must, we must renew this mind and make sure it's lined up with His Word. Amen. So we're going to ask you to stand your feet this morning, grab one. You're here this morning and things just not going like you'd like for them to go. And brother, you, you may be here this morning and your life may be totally in shambles. Seems like there's no way out, there's no hope. And I'm telling you this morning, there's hope. There's Amen. hope. Brother, I'm going to tell you where it's going to start. It's going to start right here in this mind. We're going to have to renew this mind and get it lined up with God's way and God's way. If you do that, brother, God take care of the rest of us. Go ahead and sing and get ready. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
Not one thing I go back and change. Not one thing. I'll tell you what we can do. We can start off a brand new today. Huh? We can change today. We can change today. When you come. One more verse. One more verse.
sufficient for every need in our life. I'll just get you a good hold and hold on. <laughs> they dick it, but I promise you that. They dick it. Amen. That that you can't change, that that you can't fix. That ain't God in the God in heaven again. Amen. Amen. That's all you care for him, but he cares for you. Amen. I don't know a better way than start here out. Just pray you. You know, it'd be good to meet you every one of us. Even I thought every Sunday, but it would be good to every one of us. Right now, to the end. How much more power would we have? How much more victory would we have in our life if we've done that? It's the little things that we neglect that cost us so much. I appreciate the message and I appreciate the being here this morning. Pray for all of you sick. I've got several sick. Jerry's doing better, but she doesn't ever say she coughed all night last night. Pray, pray for her. Pray for her. Sister Lee, she's got to go out some tips on the morning. Pray for her that she's not going to be in that. I think we ought to go fix whatever needs to be fixed. I mean, he's God. And besides him, there he is none of us. I thank God for that this morning. Anyone else got anything this morning? Uh, I remember Brother Aaron. He goes 29th, I believe, this month to have his tonsils and adenoids taken out. He's not an old man, but that's rough on an adult. So I don't remember him. Anyone else? Remember this Wednesday night. We are dead in devotions. Starts at 6 o'clock. All of you can come be with us. We've got time to go. Thank you for being here, folks. That's it. See you next Sunday. God bless you. Take care of one another. See you this week.